The Soul Redeemer, Book 3, Kingdoms, Part 1, Thy Kingdom Come. Chapter 1, Flight. In the Past, 1965. Joel carefully chose to travel under the cloak of darkness, avoiding any unwanted attention. Even now, as he walked through the wooded back roads of Alabama, he was aware that demons were hunting him. And even though it was highly unlikely that human agents would find him here, spirits very likely could. The only hope he clung to was this new truth that had risen up within him. He had known the moment he set eyes on the girl that he had spent his entire forty years serving the wrong master, and he knew then that his life as he had known it had come to an end. Several weeks ago, he had arranged a meeting in a park to personally meet a little girl that had captured his interest. He was aware of an ancient prophecy that spoke of a girl in a specific bloodline who would crush Satan under her feet. When he had learned that Nicole had survived a marriage ritual to Satan without drugs, he researched and found that she fit the criteria. As he had watched Nicole and her mother leave the park, he returned to his car and allowed a lifetime of buried emotions to find their way to the surface. As the rivers of tears began to flow, pain had assaulted his heart. He had cried for all the pain he had experienced in his life as a victim. And as a programmer of minds, he cried out in shame and disgust for all the pain and trauma he had inflicted on others the innocence. When he was cried out, he had quietly called out to the one who had been waiting for him. Lord God, I am not sure you want me, but I'm done with my old life. I'm leaving it behind. If you can use a wretch like me, I choose to freely offer myself and my services, such as they are, to you. The answer had come immediately. My child, whom I love more than life itself, I sent my perfect son Jesus as the ultimate blood sacrifice to pay the penalty for your sins. Are you willing to seek his forgiveness and to accept his forgiveness for your sins? Are you willing to repent, to surrender your life to him? Joel had gladly accepted Jesus and his forgiveness. He renounced Satan and vowed that he would spend the rest of his life seeking after the Most High God, serving him in humble obedience. And in return, he expected the Most High God to cloak him from the eyes, ears of the enemy, the spiritual enemy as well as physical. A woman's scream of desperation startled him out of his reflection. He stopped and listened. And when more screams and cries came from somewhere off to his right, he left the road and carefully trod through the underbrush toward the increasing sound of voices. The smell of smoke reached his nostrils, and a sickening sense of what he was about to witness suddenly assaulted his heart. He stopped at the edge of a yard, assessing the situation. He had come upon a KKK meeting in progress. A large cross had been lit on fire and was throwing violent light, illuminating this night of horror. About a dozen figures dressed in white hooded robes stood in a circle around the burning cross with their torches raised high as in worship. One white-robed figure stood with his hand on a rope that was wrapped around the neck of a bound black man as he stood precariously on a stump. Loud wails, moans, and screams were coming alternatingly from his wife, who was being restrained by another hooded figure that was trying not only to keep her from her husband, but who was tugging at her nightdress in hopes of disrobing her. Lord, help me, Joel prayed. Without further consideration, he stepped out from the bushes and authoritatively called out, In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I command you to release these people and go. All eyes turned to him with momentary surprise. 
and then with a shout, the, quote, robe, attending the rope, kicked the stump out from under the victim, leaving him dangling, kicking, and struggling for his life. The, quote, robe, holding the woman, cast her from him, and in an instant of chaotic action, every KKK member threw down their torches, then fled the scene and disappeared. With strength coming from outside himself, Joel lunged forward, grasped the black man, and lifted him up to ease the grip of the rope around his neck. The woman quickly retrieved a large knife from the house and cut the rope. Joel and the man both fell to the ground, and the woman dropped beside her husband, weeping and thanking God while he coughed and tried to catch his breath. Joel took the knife and cut the ropes binding his hands and feet, then lay down exhausted, not only from the excitement and exertion of this event, but from the weariness of his week-long journey that seemed to afflict him all at once. The man hoarsely whispered, Jemmy, douse the flames! The woman jumped up, grabbed the water hose, and extinguished the fires. When it was safe, she plopped down on the ground with the two men. For several minutes, the three were quiet as they tried to grasp the reality of their situation. After a bit, Joel opened his eyes and saw the woman looking at him curiously. Are you an angel, she asked. The irony of that question struck him as funny, and he began to laugh. The release of emotion felt so good that Joel laughed harder and harder. The contagious joy that erupted from him flowed onto the young couple, and they began to laugh wholeheartedly as well. Finally, Joel said, I am certainly no angel. However, I do believe that they are here among us. He sat up and reached out his hand to the man. I'm Joel, by the way. Looking into his eyes, the man clutched Joel's hand, sat up, and with heartfelt gratitude, he said, Thank you for coming to our rescue, Mr. Joel, and I'm sure you're right about them angels. I'm Jimmy, and this here's my woman, Jemima. Pleased to meet you both, Joel said. Already sitting up, Jemima sternly looked him over the nest. Mr. Joel, how long's it been since you ate a good meal, anyhow? You look like you could use some down-home cooking. How about coming in for some refreshment? We'd be right pleased to share a humble abode with you, Jimmy confirmed in a hoarse voice as he carefully began to stand. Jimmy, are you hurt? Joel asked. I ain't got no injuries that God can't take care of, he replied. Then he turned to Jemima, leaned down, and gently caressed her face. But how about you, Jimmy? Did them loonies hurt you, baby? In spite of her protest, she flinched when he took hold of her arms to help her up. He pulled up her sleeves and gasped at the deep gashes. Jimmy, my love, you come with me. We gotta bind up these precious arms just as the good shepherd binds up his broken little lambs. Jimmy lovingly took his bride by the elbow, helped her to stand and led her into the house. Jemima looked over her shoulder at Joel and called out, You too, Mr. Joel. You come on in here. You gotta get some food in that hungry stomach of yours. I heard it growl loud enough to wake a sleeping bear. After Jemima's arms were bandaged and they had eaten the best flapjacks Joel had ever tasted, Jimmy asked, Where are you headed to, Mr. Joel? Joel fingered his teacup and answered as honestly as he could. My plan is to leave the country. I'm heading for Europe. Jimmy and Jemima exchanged an undecipherable look before Jimmy spoke. Mr. Joel, we be indebted to you. In exchange, me and Jemmy will go with you and help take care of you just like you done for us. Oh, no, you don't owe me anything, he protested. There's no way I could allow you to accompany me. I am on a difficult and possibly dangerous journey with many more unknowns than I care to admit. It wouldn't be fair to place you in such a position as that. Jemima replied, now, I don't know what you be running from, but in case you ain't got the eyes to see, we be sitting ducks here. Them men ain't gonna just go away with their tails between their legs. No, sir. They'll be back, they will, and if we be here when they come, we be done for. Besides, the way I sees it, 
no matter what kind of danger you be in, you got the Lord on your side. I ain't never seen such big angels as was helping you tonight. And the light, it was like a portal was opened and heaven's glory was just shining down on you. I say we take our chance with you. She's right, Mr. Joel. Now I don't see into the other realm the way my Jemmy does, but I've been with her a long while and she be tried and true. Besides, there ain't no way you could have done what you did without some help from the Almighty. Them KKK ain't afraid of nothing. So for them to run the way they did, they had to be seeing something bigger than themselves. They just go around violating, killing, and getting away with it. The law looks to other way, no matter what the white folk do. They already killed my baby girl. They burnt our cabin to the ground with her asleep in it and us not able to get to her. Emotions began rising up from deep inside as Jimmy spoke. They lynched my pops two years back while my mama was being raped and beat to death. Too much violence to bear. They sat quietly while Jimmy blew his nose and composed himself. When he spoke next, it felt to Joel as though God's spirit was in the words. We be going with you, sir, for there be nothing left here for us that more of the same. We done with it, Jimmy and me. We be your family now.